Today we're going to be talking about why bad things happen. Along with that, we're going to touch on soul contracts, free will, near-death experiences, and how the 3D perspective differs from higher dimensional perspectives. If this is something that interests you, stick around and let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to The Wholeness Show. My name is Veronica and I help people create the life of their dreams by expanding their consciousness and teaching them how to live their lives more intentionally. Last week I received a message on Facebook from a viewer named Allie. Thank you for sending me your message, Allie. And I'm going to read you what she said so that I'm accurate. Allie said, Hi, I just recently found one of your videos. I've been very interested lately in near-death experiences and connecting with my spirit guides. Anyway, in your video you had mentioned that there are no such thing as coincidences. Everything in your life is planned and happens for a greater good. I have heard this also in other videos like yours. My question or what I'm wondering is that at the age of four and five, I was sexually molested by a family friend. It's very hard to believe that that happened on purpose or that it happened for a greater good. Can you explain why these horrible things happen? Thank you for your time and I hope to hear back from you. As you can see, this was a pretty serious question. And so I wanted to take the time to respond to her, not just on Facebook, but in a video, because I know that this is a question that we've all had at one time or another. If there is such a thing as a God and he's a loving God, why in the world would he allow tragic events natural disasters, traumatic things to happen to children or old people. Why would he allow my stepdad to be an alcoholic and beat me? Why would he allow my husband, friend, sister, mother, father, whoever, to die? Why would he allow me to be sexually assaulted? First of all, let me say, that if you have found yourself in any situation like that or asking that question for any reason, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. From my human perspective, my heart goes out to you and I send you all my love. Know that I've been right there with you over the years because I have also gone through some pretty heavy things. So let me share with you what I've learned and how changing my perspective on some of these things changed my life and helped me to heal. If you're willing to listen with an open heart and an open mind, hopefully this will shift your perspective as well and it will help you heal a little bit. So let's start at the beginning and unravel this big ball of yarn thread by thread and there is a lot to talk about so please bear with me through this and let's just make our way through it. And P.S. It's a beautiful day outside, so I have my windows open, so I apologize in advance if there is outside noise coming in. To begin with, let's talk about dimensions. I won't dive too deeply into this today, maybe at another time, but not today. If you haven't been exposed to this information about dimensions yet, there are tons of other videos out there. All you have to do is go do a quick search and you'll come across a slew of them. So I will just do a very nutshell version of that today. Okay, so in a nutshell, we live on Earth and Earth is in the third dimension. We live in a 3D reality and I'm sure you've heard that even if you didn't understand what that meant. When we're talking about 3D, we're talking about a very polarized way of thinking and being. It's all about duality. Things are good, bad, yes, no, black, white, same, different. There's not a lot of tolerance or open-mindedness for anything that isn't the same as you. And there's not a lot of room for gray area. People have a very polarized way of thinking and very polarized worldviews. It's very dense and heavy. There's not a lot of lightness of being and acceptance and live and let live and let love reign. Not a whole lot of that. In the big scheme of things and in relation to other planetary systems, Earth is about as far away as you can get from what we would think of as heaven or God 
God, the divine source, whatever you call God, that greater being where everything came from, Earth is about as far away from that as you can get, density and dimension wise. There's varying information on this, but according to my guides and angels, when you're thinking of heaven or of God, you're thinking of like 11th dimension and up, like 11th, 12th, 13th dimension. Other star systems and multidimensional beings like the Pleiadians, Arcturians, Syrians, uh, Lyrans, all of those, they reside somewhere in the middle. Some are fifth dimension, sixth dimension, seventh, eighth, etc. We are third, and this is a, a talk for a whole other time as to why we are such a low dimension and density. It's not a punishment. It's not because we're not as good as. You actually had to work your way here. You had to go through all of those other ones and step your density to a place where you could exist on Earth because Earth, Earth is like being in the Olympics. You start small and then you go for the big show. Well, if you've made it to Earth, you're kind of badass. You made it to the Olympics. You've shown that you can get to a place where you can survive in such a heavy density, heavy polarized dual way of looking at things because being on earth is hard and you actually had to make your way here. So now you're here and you don't have the same way of viewing things that higher dimensional beings would have because Earth comes with its own viewpoint. And when you come to Earth, you get an amnesia that comes on you so that you don't remember your life in heaven, you don't remember your higher self, you don't remember God. So once you get out of the third dimension, higher, you don't have that same polarized worldview. You have more of a spiritual, expanded view of things where you understand things like energy and love and interconnectedness and that we're all one and you understand how different things even if they would seem tragic what humans would view as tragic how they would contribute to the greater good and how you see things from a bird's eye view and how if this happens it causes this ripple effect and all these other things can happen as well and with these dimensions the higher you rise the more you get it so when God or your higher self are viewing things such as death they don't see them in the same ways that humans see them because to them death is really no big deal heaven is your home those higher dimensions, that's your home. You're just visiting here. You're just playing a part in a play. And so to come home, it's a good thing. They don't view that as a big deal. It's like your child going away to sleepaway camp for a week. And at first, they don't want to be there. They think it's all tragic. And then you go to pick them up and they're like, no, I don't want to go. I made friends here. I'm having fun. I'm doing crafts. I'm swimming. I'm canoeing. I don't want to go. Once they're home, they're like, oh. I forgot how much I love home. Here's my toys, there are my friends, here's my video games. They don't view life circumstances, even death, the same way humans do. They understand that major life decisions, um, tragic circumstances or different consequences or different family dynamics, just like a stone into the pond, those things can trigger other life events in your life and other people's lives that are significant and that they can be for the greater good whether that is to set the stage and prepare you for what your life's calling truly is this is just a broad example a hypothetical but say your calling was to become a counselor or a healer or a therapist something like that and that was triggered because you had gone through a traumatic experience when you were younger. Maybe you're going to come across someone later in life who's ready to commit suicide. You might not even know this person, but they're ready to commit suicide or do something terribly tragic 
and it's important that they stay here. So in order to prevent that, you're going to have gone through something similar earlier in life to what they've gone through. And so you've learned from it, you've grown from it, you have healthier perspectives, or you have a compassion and a heart for people who've also gone through that. You go through your whole life and maybe you just happen to come across this person. Maybe they're a coworker. Maybe you meet them at a bus stop. Maybe you become their friend. Maybe they're your child. Whoever they might be, you now have the tools that they need, the compassion that they need to come say something, do something, act with a, an act of kindness or service, something that intervenes in that, gives them a new perspective and stops them from killing themselves. That makes sense? You never, ever, ever know how what you've gone through and how your story impacts the people around you sometimes you'll never know sometimes they watched you go through it and it affected them on such an existential level you'll never know what they went through however what you went through changed their life maybe what you went through wasn't about you at all it was just about that other person maybe you had agreed to play the part in that scenario in order for your perpetrator to get a life lesson. Maybe this is just karma playing out from other lifetimes that you're not even currently aware of. We're going to touch more on that in a little bit. Okay, so let's unravel this a little bit more. Prior to incarnating into each and every lifetime that you live, you and your soul family are going to come together and you're going to hash out every single detail of this life that you're going to live together. You're going to decide who's going to play what role, who's going to be the mother, the father, the boss, the neighbor, the best friend, the child. You're going to decide what life lessons you want to learn, what dynamics you want to play out, what karma you want to work off how you want your soul to expand and what you want the end game to be for this lifetime down to the most minute detail and this is what's known as your soul contract this is the basic agreement for the plan that you have for this lifetime in regards to yourself and every other member of your soul family that will also be here playing their parts it's like the script to a play the goal of each lifetime is really about balance and expansion. Now when I say balance, I'm referring to what most people call karma. But most people have a, a view of karma that isn't really accurate. Most people look at karma like some big punishment, some big lightning bolt in the sky that's gonna come down and zap you in the butt if you step out of line. And that's not totally accurate. Yes, if you do this, you will get this. If you act in this way, you will then get treated this way. Yes. However, you choose that for yourself. You, your higher self, you guys choose that. You know that the way to get closer to the divine and to keep evolving your soul is to seek out complete balance in every area. So in order to know joy, you have to know grief. In order to know wealth, you have to go through being destitute. In order to be loving, you had to also experience being cruel. You see what I'm saying? So with all of this being said, you can see how there's really no such thing as a victim when it comes down to it. Because every single thing that has ever happened to you in your lifetime has happened to you by your choice. Even if you're not aware of it with your human mind, on a soul level, nothing exists in your human reality that you did not choose to put there. Most people, when hearing this, they typically get into a defensive mindset and they're just like, how dare you say that I chose that? Or how dare you say that those victims chose that? Let's take it a step further. 
When I was questioning my guides about this years ago, and I was asking them about free will and about soul contracts and about all of this kind of stuff. And I said, well, what about somebody who goes rogue? What about somebody who goes off the plan? They're exerting their free will and they're like, yeah, well, screw your plan. I'm going to decide to do this. I'm going to drink and drive and I'm going to kill you. Or I'm going to attack you in a parking garage and I'm going to rape and murder you. What about that? This is how they responded. They said, even in those situations, those tragic, unfortunate, horrible situations, you still have a say in it. You also have free will and you have the choice of if you want to stick to your original timeline and plan or if you're okay with allowing this new um, intrusion onto your timeline and plan. If you don't know what I mean by timeline, off of every single moment in time, there are countless number of other timelines that can come off of that. Do you remember those choose your own adventure books from when you were little? It's like if you want to make this choice, turn to page five. You want this choice, turn to page 32. It's like that. Out of every single moment in time, there are numerous choices. Do you want to turn left? Do you want to turn right? Do you look and acknowledge this stranger in the eyes or do you keep your head down and keep walking? There are all kinds of timelines. And say someone else decides to jump timelines to another one and that suddenly disrupts the timeline that you had chosen to be on with something that you didn't plan or choose. What then? Well, what they said was that if someone chooses to do something like that, then there are a few different ways that this can play out. Let's take the example of a car crash by a drunk driver that kills you unexpectedly and that was not part of your original plan. So when you die or get to heaven or transition or whatever you want to call it, you will be approached and asked, is this okay with you? And then you get the choice or the free will to either say, no, this isn't okay with me. <laughs> I have work to do. I have family to take care of. I have children to raise. I have things I still need to accomplish in this lifetime and no, this is not okay with me. Or you can look at the bird's eye view of your life and you can see how this event is going to play out in this ripple effect among all the people in your life and you can see that perhaps this is for the greater good. This is going to cause a lot of chances and opportunities for growth and expansion in the people that you love that wasn't anticipated or you can look at it and say, you know, I made a lot more progress in this lifetime quicker than I anticipated I would. So, yeah, it's okay with me. I'll stick with this. You get the choice. So what happens if you choose to say, no, it's not okay with me? In that case, you will either A, be placed back on a different timeline prior to that tragic event happening so that it just never happens to you and you don't even know about it you never knew that that had happened. B, you'll have what's called a near miss. I'm sure you've had these or you've seen them, you know, where a car just narrowly misses or a bullet comes flying by and just skims the, the head or something happens so that you're like, oh my God, that should have totally taken me out. That just missed me. How lucky am I? And that might happen like in the situation with this car crash that I'm talking about, something like that might happen where if the other participants in that accident decided that they did want that to happen and they are okay with their outcome, then that situation still needs to happen, but you don't necessarily have to be hurt by it. Your guides and your angels will step in and protect you from the damage that originally happened so that you aren't harmed in the same way, you just have a near miss yet that whole situation still plays out. Or C, you'll be allowed to go through that tragic event and you'll be allowed to die. And then you'll be allowed to come back with all or a portion of that death or heaven experience in order to bring back a message or bring back learning for the rest of humanity. And that's where we see near-death experiences. So as you can see, that further goes to show that even when someone else exerts their free will and goes rogue, if you will, 
even in that you have a choice and there's really no such thing when it comes down to it as being a victim. I say this with the most compassion that I can because I've been there too. If something has happened in your human lifetime to cause suffering, there's a reason for it. You may not be aware of that reason with your human consciousness at this moment, but there's no such thing as needless suffering. Whether that was to cause a lesson to be learned by you or someone else, whether it was to set the stage for a future event, whether it was to uh, work off karma from another lifetime you're not aware of, whether it was to cause legislation to be put into place. And this is hard to think about from our human perspective too, but sometimes it's just to give an act of service. And what I mean by that is sometimes, hypothetically, sometimes babies can be born for the sole purpose of later becoming an organ donor for someone who's going to need that through some experience they're going through. The only reason they were here was to teach a lesson about grief because they died or to give the gift of life through organ donation or something. That was the pure bottom line reason for their soul contract and part in this lifetime. Humans take that to some huge tragic level. My baby died. This is tragic. How dare God? But from a soul level perspective, you have to see things from the broader picture and realize that tragedy and death aren't always tragic. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. We have a loving and infinitely compassionate God. And if he signed off on your soul contract and gave it the old thumbs up, then there is a reason for everything in there. Soften your heart towards yourself and towards everyone that you know because we're all just here playing out our parts in this play and the script that was written. The real goal here is to take a look at everything we've been through and everything that's happened to us and take an honest look at what we think the reason could be. How did this impact me? What lessons did I learn from this? How has that happening made me the person that I am today? Perhaps something tragic happened because you wanted to experience the, uh, the journey of substance abuse and going through that trouble. You needed a catalyst to cause you to become an addict so that you could experience addiction, recovery, etc. Take a look at the ripple effect that something, an event happened to cause these things. Take a look at how family dynamics played out. And I tell you, a lot of the things that I went through made a lot more sense once I started learning more about my past lives and how other people in my life, my current life, were in those lives and the dynamics that have played out and the karma and the lessons. For example, one of the most recent lifetimes that I lived in that lifetime, I suffered with mental illness and feeling unloved by my mother and feeling like she didn't understand me and that she didn't always treat me with the most compassion and this rift that we always had in our relationship. I learned in this lifetime, because in this lifetime, I have a daughter who has struggled through some similar things and we've had a very difficult strained relationship at times and it breaks my heart but she feels that she has a mother who doesn't always understand her who doesn't always act in the most loving compassionate ways towards her and it has kept a rift in our relationship we don't agree on the things that have happened or how they happened or why they happened or um, that I feel the way I feel. We don't agree on that, but that's her perspective. Her reality is that she has a mother that feels that way. Well, I found out after diving into my past lives by using my pendulum 
and talking to my spirit guides. And if you want more information on that, I will link to my video on all of that down below. What I learned is she played my mother in that lifetime. So in this lifetime, we literally switched roles and now I am the mother and she is the child and we're seeing each other from the complete opposite perspectives in order to give ourselves balance. I know this was a heavy topic, but I hope that I did it justice and I hope that I helped to answer your question at least a little bit. If any of you have any more questions, please feel free to message me. I always love getting your messages. You can email me, you can direct message me on Facebook or on Instagram. There are all kinds of ways that you can message me or reach out to me, or you can just leave a comment here on the video. I would be happy to help you. My goal is to help open your mind and to heal. Because when one of us heals and becomes more loving, it helps to heal all of us and make this a more loving world. Until next time.